Well, there's been a lot of talk recently in the real estate industry here in Oahu regarding retrofitting old high-rise condominiums with fire protection for sprinklers. What well, all started with the Marco Polo fire that took place in 2017. I remember the fire at Marco Polo like it was yesterday. I remember I was coaching my daughter's canoe practice at the Diamond Head side of the Alawai Canal, and we started seeing all this smoke coming down the canal. And take a look at this picture. Spoiler alert, that was not the smoke from that day. Unfortunately, I did not get that on camera. That's actually a funnel cloud, but it gives you a perspective of the view and the direction looking down the canal. And the first thing that went through my head when I heard the fire was at Marco Polo, I'm like, oh no, this is not good. Because knowing what I know from when I was in the fire department is that the Marco Polo has an enclosed hallway. So it just had the ability to entrap the fire and let it spread down the corridors. Uh, Station 29 was the first one on the scene there, but um, yeah, the, the fire itself did spread quite rapidly. And um, in Hawaii Kai, most of the buildings that we would kind of uh, pre-inspect had open walkways on the backside or Malka side of the building. So that was great for ventilation and it didn't allow the fire to spread within units. Um, so, you know, another thing I learned later was that, uh, the Marco Polo itself actually had, uh, louvered doors. So that was another way for the fire to spread. Okay. Shortly thereafter in 2018, the city and county of Honolulu, uh, pushed forward to retrofit older buildings for fire protection. And what they rolled out was ordinance 19-4. You might ask yourself, what is ordinance 19-4? Well, basically what it is, is, a uh, fire life and safety evaluation. And this started with the Honolulu Fire Department uh, doing an evaluation on all the high rises over 75 feet here on Oahu. If you wanna see a list of the over 300 high rises on Oahu that the Honolulu Fire Department has identified, I'm gonna post a link in the comments below. Now, first off, I'm gonna say a disclaimer here. I used to be a firefighter here in Honolulu. I was with HFD between 1999 through 2007. Uh, there were some great experiences I had during my career. I was um, stationed in Hawaii Kai for the bulk of my career at Station 34. And I was not in fire prevention. So I just want to get that out of the way. And I've been out of the department now since 2007. So take what I say with a grain of salt. And, and I am also not an attorney. I'm a realtor here on Oahu. But us realtors here in Oahu recently went through some training to cover uh, what Ordinance 19-4 encompasses. And since then, the Honolulu Fire Department uh, came up with a list of over 300 high-rises on Oahu that are 75 feet or more. With Ordinance 19-4, there are two options going forward. The first of which is, would be to install a new fire sprinkler system by the year 2038. The second would be to make necessary repairs and or upgrades to the existing fire alarm and safety of the building by the year 2030. How the owners and boards are going to decide on which direction they're going to go, and they also need to decide how are they going to fund this. You know, for example, uh, are they going to be increasing their reserves or increasing maintenance fees or having a special assessment? Associations hired a design professional to conduct the FLSE. They had to file a report by August of 2022. The challenge of most of these buildings coming up with the funds is that they already are older buildings that are say 40 to 60 years old and are dealing with other capital improvements such as spalling, painting, railings, windows, and plumbing, let alone elevators as all of these buildings are high rises. So based upon the FLSC results, roughly 270 or 80 to 90% of these buildings failed the initial test. Part of the upgrades will include strobes, horns, and audibles in every unit. Fire rated doors are also going to be a requirement, and there can't be any pukas or open air gaps uh, between the pipes that travel within the floors. Apparently, that was another issue that happened during the Marco Polo fire. At this point in time, this is just something on Oahu. It doesn't have anything to do with the neighbor islands. This law was passed for counties which are larger than half a million people. And uh, if you're not familiar with Hawaii, Honolulu County or the island of Oahu is the only island uh, or county with a population north of half a million people. It's closer to a million to be exact.
what is exempt from this? Uh, buildings under 75 feet do not apply. For instance, I'm selling some properties right now that are um, just as old as some of these ones that do have to retrofit. However, they are less than 75 feet. So uh, they are not um, going to be required to do this. However, in addition to there being over 300 high rises over 75 feet on Oahu, it's come up recently in our industry that there are over 300 condo projects on Oahu that are underinsured. So a lot of this started with the uh, building collapse in Miami. And then as we all know, we had uh, the Maui fires that happened um, in August of last year. So insurance premiums for condos and HOAs have gone up astronomically over the past year or two. With that said, once these buildings start implementing the FLSE uh, requirements, going forward, in theory, their insurance rates should drop. Well, where do we go from here? To be honest, there are going to be a lot of growing pains and challenges with high-rises on Oahu that need to comply with Ordinance 19-4. However, a silver lining is that uh, the Marco Polo, who went through this um, awful tragedy back in 2017, has come out on the other side of the tunnel in the sense that they now do have sprinklers there. Um, I've been blogging about this after the fire because I predicted uh, that sales there in the building would rebound after the fire, which they really did because at one point you could not get uh, financing on units there. Uh, we actually helped an owner uh, sell their condo via our, our auction platform because there were no buyers out there that could obtain financing and you're uh, forced to sell a cash buyers. So it is really sad and tragic for the owners at the time, but here we are on the other side of that. And this is the Marco Polo today. So as I predict, you know, we're now in the year 2024, the year 2030, uh, for those that opt for option number two is going to be hitting us within six, six years. Uh, so um, that's right around the corner. But if uh, HOAs opt for option number one, which is to retrofit four sprinklers by the year 2038, uh, there's still 14 years out. So there's a little bit of a, a road ahead, but there is a silver lining at the end of the tunnel. And uh, if you have questions about condos, high rises here on Oahu, if you're looking to buy or sell a building um, that's going through this right now, or if you're looking to get in a building that already does have sprinklers, we can help you all across the board. Or, or if condo living simply isn't for you, we help people buy and sell homes as well. If you want to get in touch with us, feel free to reach out. can be reached at 808-371-3509. Mahalo.